Good morning everyone and welcome back to another Hope at Home video where we are looking together at the book of Philippians. So as you are probably aware we're now coming towards the end of the book of Philippians so as we can see in these passages and the passages to follow and passages before that Paul is kind of summarising his letter and ending it with a kind of thanks to the church in Philippi. So today the passage we are looking at is Philippians 4 verses 18 to 20 which say this. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering and acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> So as you are probably aware, what Paul is talking about here is that um, he received a gift from the church in Philippi to support him in his ministry. So Paul is living by faith. Um, he's, you know, traveling around, planting churches, you know, converting the Gentiles and doing all the awesome things Paul did. Um, but to do that, obviously, he needed support um, from churches, from people. Um, so here he's saying, actually, thank you for the support you have given me. But what strikes me about this passage is Paul's understanding of how, I guess, currency works. So for him, his understanding of what has happened is that God has provided for him through the church in Philippi. Therefore, his logic is now God will provide for the church in Philippi, not just because they have blessed him, but because of who God is. So for him, it's kind of, I think in a worldly understanding, often when we give someone money, we expect something back or we expect them to pay us back. And it's kind of a person to person transition. For example, when you pay for services, you expect a service done. Like when you pay for a, a carpenter, you expect a table or whatever you've ordered. Um, but for Paul here, his understanding is that actually it is God who has provided for him. It is God who will provide for the church in Philippi. It is not, you know, the money is not our own. It is not his, it is not theirs, it is God's. And I, I kind of like this understanding is actually that it is not for us to provide for each other. It, God does provide for us. You know, in the Bible, he is referred to as Jehovah Jireh, which we know means God provider. Um, so we know that God provides for us. And, and Paul says here, he says, actually, I have more than enough that God doesn't just provide enough, that God provides more than enough um, through amazing ways. And as you uh, would have heard in the previous video, that actually um, a lot of churches didn't give to Paul. In fact, the church in Philippi was one of the only churches to give to Paul's needs and they met his needs and they probably didn't have lots of money. So it was probably an absolute sacrifice for them to give towards him. Um, but on the thought of kind of God providing, I want to share with you a story. So I've recently been reading the biography. I was going to say bibliography, but that's not, not the right word. The biography of Hudson Taylor. So if you don't know about Hudson Taylor, I definitely give him a Google. But he was one of the first kind of main missionaries to China. Obviously, there were a lot of missionaries that went before him, but he he made a, a, like a world of difference. And he's this really famous missionary. So I want to share with you a story that he he told someone shared in his biography um, so at this point Hudson Taylor had moved to China and he was working with a missionary who had support the missionary he was working with had to go home because he was ill so Hudson Taylor had no support no money nothing to keep him going and he was like helping to run a hospital and looking after orphans and doing all these amazing works um, so the story goes like this so in prayer Taylor arrived at an important conclusion had not God said that whatever we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus shall be done? And are we not told to seek first the kingdom of God, not means to advance it and say all these things shall be added to us? There was no electronic transfers of funds in the 19th century China. It took five months for a ship to make it from London to Shanghai. So even if a letter was sent expressing the urgency of the situation, it would take months to hear something. When Dr. Parker left, who was the missionary that went home, there were only funds on hand to cover the current month's expenses. Taylor called in his prayer team, the Bridge Street Christians, who summoned an amazing faith to see beyond the present circumstances. They were quick to remind Taylor about his own teaching to them, that God is a real father who would never forget his children's needs. 
Soon the funds left by Dr Parker were used up and Hudson Taylor's own supplies ran low. Word about the hospital's financial situation reached the patients and they began to wonder what might happen. Taylor went to the mat with God, as in like on his knees to pray. He redoubled his prayers. Day after day passed and there seemed to be no answer. Then came serious news from the hospital's cook, Kui Hui. The last bag of rice has been opened and it's disappearing rapidly. The last bag of rice is disappearing rapidly. Some might have been jolted by such news, but not Taylor. Then the Lord's time for helping us must be close at hand, he told Kei Hui. Here one sees the essence of Hudson Taylor. He knew that God, as a loving father, always responds to his children's needs. While he seldom shows up early, he is never too late. Very true. Before the last bag of rice was devoured, a letter arrived for Taylor that was among the most extraordinary he ever received. In the letter from a Mr Berger in the UK was a cheque for £50, which was the equivalent to $3,660 today when factoring cost of living increases or $30,500 using average earnings increases. So it was a lot of money, basically. The contents of the letter were even more remarkable. Mr Berger's father had just passed away and left him a substantial inheritance. Mr Berger explained that he didn't want to use the bequest to enhance his personal lifestyle. He was praying that the money would be used for kingdom purposes. He asked if Taylor could use more. Would Taylor pray about where he could use regular support from Mr Berger? So by trusting God and trusting God to provide, of course God provided and you know Paul here knows that God provides Hudson Taylor knew that God provides he is a good father so if you're worried about anything today um, and sorry this has been a slightly longer video but if you're worried about anything if you're struggling financially or whatever know that God does provide he might not be in the time that you want him to provide it might not be exactly when you want it but it will be exactly when you need it so place your trust in God because he is a good good father Thank you and have a good day.